So we thought that um, since uh, the um, Centre for Theology and Public Issues and um, SCPO had set up this conference together, that it would be a good idea to finish it with some initial thoughts from us about what the big questions arising might be and what the sorts of agendas for the institutions and groups we work with um, emerging out of the day um, might be. Um, I think I'm going to, if that's all right, I'm going to start by sort of putting a question to, 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 to you and see what you um, think about it. Because... One of the things that really, one of the things that struck me most about the day is this narrative of transformation, right? Um, this has not been a day where we've narrated, well, 25 years and we've sort of steadily built something up and now look what we've got to and we look about. It's been much more like, well, 25 years ago it was this and then... And now we're in a very different kind of a place. So we're talking about a period of very rapid change, which has also been a period of institution building. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Because right? we, might, um, we might have thought that what we'd have seen um, was kind of steady accumulation, but that's not it. So I suppose um, we, well, and ev that everybody's been trying to look forward and seeing lots of, lots of very different visions. So I guess one of my questions is, is there a feeling that there's something that should be re- captured, um, <laughs> regained, restated from what we heard this morning from Alison and Graham about earliest points? Or is there a sense in which, no, that, that was a moment, that was an important moment, that was a moment when something shifted, but it's not coming back. We need to find a new, new politics, right? And a new, new relation of church and politics. I think the, the stories that we tell ourselves and the, the origins of where these, these kind of institutions and this kind of work comes, it's important. And I mean, I've had, I've had the privilege of been working in this field for uh, like, yeah, maybe nearly 20 years. So I, I kind of, I feel I know it, but it's good to be reminded of where we came from. Mm. Mm. But also that certainly post pandemic, yeah. Um, things just feel really different. I mean, that's interesting, isn't it? Because we haven't really talked pandemic. I, I mean, no, no, it came, I mean, I've, I've heard Tid um, uh, mention, the, 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 uh, it was actually Anthony, wasn't it, talked about the way, the way that the, the pandemic enabled us, enabled to enforce a, set of, a new set of ways of working. But what, what, what do you see as different? Well, what's what's um, key? Uh, work before uh, 2020 would have meant lots of meetings meetings in Parliament, meetings in London, meetings in the church offices, and they were always in person mm. and face to face. Yes. <laughs> and I think this might be the first in-person SCPO event since 2020. What? You kidding me? Because wow. we, uh, we deal with the wow. weekly or monthly agenda of Parliament in a very business-like way. And the quickest and cheapest and most effective way of doing that is through uh, teams. Mm. And yet, if one of our purposes is about relationships mm. and connections, not just with the parliament and parliamentarians, but actually between the churches, um, I think one of my reflections is, should we be doing more of this kind of stuff in the future? I that is that, that, um Sorry, I did actually do a double take on this is the first, the fir the first in-person per in SCPO event. Um, I think the, the point about being there to me is really interesting. Here's something else I noticed, um, um, maybe a bit more theoretical, but I'm interested in what you think about it. And it was coming out of the panel um, of, with Mona and Steve and, and, and Alex. And it's something Mona said, there was this really interesting contrast um, between... Let's try and put it this way. On the one hand, um, the, if I could put it this way, the usefulness of religion or faith as representing a, something that everybody's got in common and are kind of coming together. So that was her idea. Well, we do thought for the day and you don't see anything contentious and it's very well managed. And then Steve's reading that positively and saying, oh, yeah, well, they're, they're, they're doing that as a way of saying, well, we, we, we can come together and we can listen to each other. But, but there's still this sense of religion as a representation of something that unites, right? 
Another side of that, actually something that's come out quite a lot in the day, is the need to represent internal difference of religious communities, right? And the real problems we run into if we start saying there's a Christian voice, right? Who's the Christian voice? What's the one Christian voice? Problems about representation, problems about power, that maybe we, need, we actually need to take the religious voices apart a bit internally. But then that in some ways takes away from the capacity of a religious voice to say, look, we all come together, we all share something. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I That's all really do, important. I do, and I don't know, this, this might reflect something of, of um, my, my Methodist upbringing, which is actually the, the, the throne and the, the, the status of a national church, uh, <laughs> to me... Great, so we're two non-conformists yeah, talking to, about the national to, debate. Uh, <laughs> to me, to me it, uh, I'm, 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 I, care about, I care about results. I care about difference. I care about the world being changed, uh, justice and peace and carefree creation and uh, the kingdom of God breaking through. I, I don't actually care about who's giving time for reflection. Oh, so scandalous, I know. I mean, <laughs> um, but actually... If, not many MSPs listen to time for reflection. Although it's at the beginning of the plenary session, it's not mandatory that they have to attend it. And the attendance is pretty poor. So actually by saying, oh, we're, we're important, or religion is important because we've got time for reflection and it's representative, but to, to how, how meaningful, how much influence does it, does it have? And I mean, I recognize I'm on one end of a, ecclesiological spectrum which maybe doesn't value this as much as other people and no disrespect if you think that's important but I just I care more about if if a vote goes in a way that brings about a uh, child poverty measure or that that for me that that's that's more what motivates me for why I do my work mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of debate around thought for the day as well it's kind of what's what's important it's and it's is the ch is the church the institution at the heart of society that gets the respect that in 1999 when that list of, of senior figures in the parliament were uh, church gone elders or members of churches um, or a church that works from the margins and in the margins and actually can speak with the voice of powerlessness rather than from a position of power um, but yeah. you've got a third. But there's a third thing, isn't there? There's a third thing that's come, that's, that, that's come up today a few times, which um, it's it's part of Stephen Noob's work. We spoke earlier. It's it's one of the things that's been mentioned here, which is the the function of holding difference, right, and the function of disagreeing well, um, and the capacity to represent the plurality, um, and that there can be plurality without without polarisation, right? And so, and it's interesting to think about how that sits alongside. A lobbying function, an advocating function, something to say, no, actually, we've got something to say and we're going to go on saying it till you listen, yeah? yeah. Uh, and, and then there's that metaphor of the SCPO actually being an interpreter, interpreting the world of politics, parliament, government to the churches mm. who maybe sometimes are dealing with more uh, matters of, of, of religion and spirituality and perhaps need an understanding of how committees work and, and but also that that role of and it was mentioned before the the literacy and civil service uh how how do they understand what churches are mm. like and how religious organizations function to aid then that that dialogue mm, mm, mm. I, I wonder if i wonder if there's there's questions or big what the big questions or comments out in the room are we've got um i fed back now how about we we pass one microphone yeah out into the audience, at least. Um, we'll think of it out, don't worry, we've got it, David's got it. Yeah, um, yes, thank you. Um, last, last November, the Scottish um, Police Scotland held a national conference on ha the hate crime strategy of the Scottish government. And they invited people of other faiths and backgrounds and cultures and whatnot to participate in this, in this particular conference. What it did focus on was, um, hate crime among the younger generation, particularly in high schools, academies, that sort of thing. Now, um, <laughs> there's been a BBC program called Drugs Map of Britain. And in their first series, Drugs Map of Britain. Drugs map, right. Series one, episode three, filmed in my area. Absolutely spot on. Now, I go into my local academy 
I can say that that program was spot on, but boy, are those kids great. I love them to bits. It's not an easy place. We have nationally, not just in Scotland, but UK-wide, real issues with crime, I mean murder, serious violent crime among our young, younger generation. Now the thing is, is that, you know, but there was talk earlier about things like chaplaincies. What are we doing with regard to chaplaincies in schools and things like academies? And are, do we have a serious program here? And is it multi-faith? Right now what I see are just Christian chaplaincies, when actually the, the serious hate crime stuff is, is across cultures, it's across faiths. We need multi-faith chaplaincies and we need it to be, <laughs> need it to be accountable. And if we're, if, we're, if we're talking about making our religion, our faith relevant for our current, for our current context, this is it. That's, 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 that's one of the main points. So yeah, I'd like to see it addressed here and other places. Oh, and by the way, I'm, I'm in contact with one of the government ministers. I'm aware that groups like Homeland Party, which are very far right organizations, and they have, they, they have campaigned and they, they are local community councillors, which means that they have access to go into schools. Homeland Party are distributing their material in her local academy. So we need to be aware of that. That's our connection. Okay. Thank you. I, uh, my recently former colleague, um, I just uh, contributed significantly to the research on uh, Christianity and the far right, and reminds us very frequently and um, forcefully and meaningfully that if we're talking about Christianity and politics, uh, and we're at least some of us are woolly left-wing liberals, we shouldn't assume that most engagement of Christianity in politics is like ours, because generally, even locally and also worldwide, it's not. Um, and th there's some... I mean, I've, see, I've seen in my academic career, I've seen the discourse on Christianity and politics shift from, well, we all assume it's irrelevant, to actually, we think it might be blooming dangerous. Um, and I feel like, as a Christian theologian working in relation to, to public life, I've got, to, I've got to take that seriously and not just say, oh, well, that's not, that's not real Christianity, because kind of it is, right? It, it, um, and, 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 and so this needs to be a theological, this needs to be a theological debate. We've got to, um, and, and to some extent, uh, uh, and, and, and there are in-house debates. So that's a... Sorry, I just went off on one. I apologise. Um, <laughs> um, and we've got, uh, I've got a gentleman here with his microphone, and I'll pass you the mic. Okay, uh, David Coleman, Eco Congregation Scotland. Very interested to hear your comments about, I think, the legacy of lockdown, um, which has shifted everything completely. We can't simply go back to the way it was, but at the same time, the meeting face to face did develop relationships, which enables us to see people who, you know, to disagree well, uh, as David the other David was saying. Um, and Again, in terms of finding space in the diary, uh, it's easier to find something else if it's only an online meeting. Whereas if you're making the commitment of being there in person, uh, I think that develops us more. Uh, I know lockdown helped the, the formal leaders of the formal churches to get to know each other an awful lot better. Uh, but the work you're doing probably would benefit from more face-to-face -face if it could happen. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, then um, uh, let's let's see what we let's see what we can we can manage. And I guess it'll be judged by the popularity. If people will find it valuable and 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 the time. But that's good. Um, maybe I'll say to uh, Bonnie, thank you for your question. And um, maybe I'll just touch on the, the the school chaplaincy one in particular, which um, I think you're absolutely right. And actually, I know that um, of the people who are school chaplains that I know who are church ministers. Um, they will see more young people and have more contact with young people in a week in the school setting than they will in their church or, or on a Sunday and maybe in a month. So actually, it's it's a really uh, I think it's a really important aspect of of ministry and um, pastoral ministry, um, not necessarily about evangelization or mission, but actually, if it, it, it this might be the, a one place where. Um, young people might see what a church leader actually is and does and that they're kind of sensible or normal or in touch with, with the real things of the world. The development of how we do that into church and interfaith, 
Um, and I guess it's a more complicated uh, situation. And also it's then balanced with what does the individual head teacher of a school have to say and the school makeup and the local authority and so on. However, um, maybe we can talk out with this conversation to see if we can take something uh, further. I don't know how much uh, knowledge uh, I'm able to bring, but I have, you know, we have contacts between us. We can probably talk to people to start a conversation going. Um, that'd be great. Thanks. There's, uh, there's a lot of really... of. of interesting research around how thinking in terms of chaplaincy as a primary activity of churches, right? The, the chaplaincy model is the default model, right? Shifts your understanding of how religion works in public, right? Because you start to say, well, it's dispersed, it's out of this, where people are, this kind of thing. Now, of course, the other side of it is chaplaincy is a very Christian idea, right? So there's a whole set of questions you've got to ask about how you, I mean, it, it just, kind of is, that's where it comes from, it has a history, so on and so forth. But you can evolve it, um, you can make a word, and, th and then that raises a set of really interesting questions about what kinds of conversations you can have about religion in public, if you draw on the experience of those kind of very local, mixed religious and secular community engagements about the issues that matter to people, and you're starting and you're building it up from there, um, and what kind of theological reflection you get if you start there, I think it's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, uh, point. Sorry, um, um, I'm wondering if, there, if there's a, 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 a... We've probably got time for maybe a, another um, comment question. Um, but if I want a bit of a stretch and a rest, let's go for that, <laughs> shall we? Um, friends, um, we would very much welcome, if, if, if you um, be, be back here at, 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 at half past for the short... Um, uh, Service of, 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 of Thanksgiving reflection commitment. That's that's that that that's right, which we will set up for. We would be even more grateful if you would stay after the service for a bit more social time um, together. Um, partly because we know we've got that set of refreshments, so we'd we'd love you to have them. <laughs> but it's probably a good a good point while everybody while everybody's here to say a massive thank you to everybody involved in making the conference happen, and particularly to um, both. Um, colleagues of David's and um, uh, students um, from, from the School of Divinity who've been uh, rushing around hel helping to, to make things happen and to thank you all for, for being here and participating. So thank you. Um, <laughs>